Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be making spotlights, for real this time. So, I'm going to start off by creating a new struct for our light. It's going to be a struct called Spotlight. Now, just in case you're having trouble envisioning it, a good example of a spotlight that you encounter on an everyday basis is a flashlight. It, it has some point of origin, and it shines in a general direction, in sort of a cone fashion. Here's the big thing. It's a lot like a point light, but it doesn't explode in every direction. It just has some sort of cone. That's the way I'm going to be building the spotlight. It's going to have some point light. I'm going to call it point light. And that's going to be the primary light of the spotlight. It's just going to have a point light. The difference being, well, it's going to have some direction, some general direction it's shining in. And it's going to have some float called cutoff, which is going to be sort of the ed the, where the edge of the spotlight is. Where does the cones part sort of end? And that's the way I'm going to define a spotlight. So, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and create a vec4 called calc spotlight. I'm going to take in some spotlight, spotlight, and some vec3 normal. Just like all the other calculation methods we've had. And, here's how this is going to work. I'm, for the most part, going to be calling calc point light, but the difference is I only want to calculate the point light if it's within that cone. So how do I figure out if it's in that cone? First off, I need to know what direction the light's actually shining in. So vec3, light direction, which is going to equal world pass 0 minus o spotlight dot point light dot position. And that's going to tell me what direction that it's actually going in. And, of course, I'm eventually going to... Well, I might as well go ahead and do that now. I want, I'm going to want to normalize this. So, now I know what direction the light's actually facing. A, or, well, I shouldn't say the direction the light's actually facing. This is the actual direction from the light to whatever pixel we're calculating. And what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have a float. I'll call it spot factor, which is just going to be the cosine. It's going to be the cosine between this light direction and whatever direction the spotlight's actually shining in. So, the way I'm going to do this is the dot product between the light direction and the spot... well... yeah, spotlight dot direction. I thought I was doing that wrong for a second there. So, there. And now, we have a very good basis of comparison. This is the dot product. This will be one if the directions are the same, and it gets lower, and this will get smaller and smaller as they sort of diverge. So, here's the big if condition. If, and only if, the... Yes, I'm doing this right. If this, the spot factor, is greater than the cutoff. Why greater? Because the closer they are, the closer these two directions are, the bigger the spot factor is. So this will be one. So the cutoff is actually going to be sort of a lower value than it. And yeah, if the spot factor is bigger than the cutoff, that means this pixel is within that cone. So I'm going to have a vec4 color, which starts off as a vec4 of just a bunch of zeros. And if this is true, then I'm going to cal say color equals calc point light of spotlight dot point light with the normal. And this is most... well, oh, and of course at the end I'm going to have to return the color. And this is most of what makes the spotlight. There's only one real difference here, and that is... this isn't perfect because this is going to leave a very hard edge. You want the spotlight to sort of fade off as it gets closer to the edge, so... how do you do that? How do you get the spotlight to sort of fade out as it gets closer and closer to the edge of the cone? So, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by some factor. And calculating this is a little tricky, but hopefully it's not that bad. Here's the big part of the calculation. I'm just going to do 1.0 minus the spot factor, which is the cosine between the two directions, if I spell it correctly. And then I'm going to divide that by 1 minus spotlight dot cutoff. I can't believe I forgot that again after the last video. There we go. 
And it might seem a little confusing what this calculation is actually doing. Keep in mind, this spot factor gets closer and closer to 1 the closer these directions are. So, if indeed they are like spot on exactly the same, this is going to be 0. So let's say, for example, our spotlight.cutoff is 0 0.7. So that'll be over 0 0.3, for instance. And so therefore, as this gets closer and closer to that cutoff value, that'll make this ratio closer and closer to 1, because 0 0.3 over 0 0.3 is 1. And if this is really close to, say, being spot on right in the center, this, this whole factor right here is going to be really close to 0, because, well, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 divided by anything is 0. Other, well, other than 0 divided by 0, but that's a whole other topic. And yeah, so, essentially, the closer this is to the center, the closer this equation will be to 0. The further away it is from the center, and the closer it is to the cutoff, the closer this is to 1. And here's how I'm going to manage that. I'm actually going to do 1.0 minus this whole equation. And I'll do parentheses around it. If I, there we go. Okay. Why? Because this way, if they're exactly the same, then my point light will have full strength. One minus zero is zero. If it's really close to the edge, then this equation will be one. One minus one is zero, and this will get really close to zero. So this is giving that fade-off effect. It just sort of fades off the closer it gets to the edge. And there's other ways of doing this, but this is the way I'm going to do it, at least for now. And, yeah, so that really completes all the shader calculation. Other than that, I just need a uniform for it. So, I'm going to have a uniform spotlight called spotlights. And I'm going to have a constant max spotlights, which is just going to be for four for now. Since they are point lights, technically, I may end up merging this with... In fact, I probably am going to end up merging this with the point light count here eventually. But for the time being, I'm just going to do a separate array for sake of simplicity. And with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another for loop, just like this one. So in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste. So, there. And this is now less than max spotlights. And now I'll just do spotlight sub i dot point light dot base dot intensity. And then here I'll do calc spotlight spotlight sub i. And with that, that that should complete the shader. This may end up having errors later, but there you go. And now all we have left is to actually implement the Fong shader code. So, just like with point lights and everything else, I'm going to create a wrapper class called Spotlight. And this is going to have a point light called point light. It's going to have a vector 3f called direction. And it's going to have a float called cutoff. And of course, all of these are going to be private. And just like with everything else, I'm going to generate getters and setters, and it's going to select all. And someone was telling me that their Eclipse can actually auto-generate constructors like this, so I'm going to try. Generate constructors from fields, select all, um, I'll do it after cutoff. Let's see what happens. Oh, cool. Don't know why I call it super, because there's not a super class, but hey, there you go. So that completes the Spotlight class. Wow, that's a lot faster than usual. Thank you, whoever told me that. I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly who. I'll look it up later, but thank you very much. I really appreciate that tip. And with that, let's go into the Fong Shader now. Now I'm going to keep my constants in sync again. Again, you can get clever and try parsing the constants in from the actual shader, but I'm just going to keep them in sync for the, for the time being. So, my Spotlight equals 4. And there. So, with that, I just need a private static spotlight array called Spotlights. It's going to be just like Point Lights Array, except it's going to be holding our spotlights instead. Again, I'm probably going to end up merging Point Lights and Spotlights somewhat since they're technically the same thing, but here you go. New Spotlight Array 
with just nothing in it. And I'm going to have a method just like before called set spotlight rather than set point light, which is going to set my set spotlights to a spotlight array called spotlights. And if spotlights.length is greater than max spotlights, then give a big error, you passed in too many spotlights, max loud is max, whoops, max spotlights, you passed in spotlights.length, there we go, make sure the error messages are helpful. And finally, dot spotlights equals spotlights. And that should allow me to have all the proper data. Now we just really need uniforms, so this is going to be slightly annoying the way I have it set up, but again, this is semi-temporary code, so it shouldn't trouble you too much. Spotlight. Okay, so we're going to iterate through all the spotlights this time, except this time it's going to be spotlight, wait, yes, okay, one second, there we go. Now, this time it's going to be spotlights sub whatever. So, spotlight sub whatever. And, just going to do that, copy and paste. And I just need point light in front of all of these. So, dot point light dot base. And that should give me quite a few of the actual data I care about for spotlights right off the bat. Now, from here, I don't need point lights anymore, but I do need the direction, and I also need the cutoff. So, cutoff. And that should be all the data that I actually need for the spotlights. So, in here, do for int i equals zero, i is less than spotlights.length, i plus plus. And here I'm just going to set uniform spotlight sub plus i plus that and spotlight sub i. Same code we've seen so many times before. Except this time we finally need a method for spotlights. And this should be all the code we actually need. In theory. So I'm going to take in a spotlight, spotlight, and it's going to... and... hmm. Okay. So I'm going to set the base light to, well, no. I'm actually going to just delete this, because I want to start from scratch. I'm going to set uniform, uniform name, plus, dot, point light. And then I'm going to set that to spotlight, dot, get, point light. There we go. And then we can just take advantage of all the, the point light code there. Now I'll just do set uniform, uniform name plus dot direction to spotlight dot get direction. And other than this, it's just mostly standard stuff that we've seen many times before. And dot cutoff to spotlight dot get cutoff. Is that how the shader spelled it? Okay, excellent. And that's going to be set uniform f. And there we go, that should be all the code we need in the falling shader. So, let's go to our game, and let's create a spotlight, why don't we? Call it just slight one it's a new spotlight, which takes in a new point light. And I'll just copy all the code from here, because this is going to get in... Oh dear, this is going to be an insanely long declaration, but... Anyways... So it's going to take in a new point light, which is going to have that. It's going to... Oh dear. It's going to take in a new vector 3f call, which I'll just... Actually, how did the auto-generation thing organize it? Okay, good. Just want to make sure. I'm going to have it go in the direction 111, because why not? And I'm going to have it pass in the cutoff of 0.7f, just like I showed or talked about earlier. And now that should be everything. if. Why does this give me an error? Oh, right. Now, it should be fine, but apparently it's not. Because I have never done in commas. And there. So now, we have a very, very basic spotlight. And just to make sure to give the 
this gets the full effect. I'm going to comment out where I set point lights, so it doesn't have any point lights. I'm going to say fong shader dot set spotlight to a new spotlight array, which just has our lun lone spotlight. And what we're going to do now is we're going to see if this works. So let's run. And it didn't crash. It appears, hey, it appears we're getting a spotlight of some sort. It doesn't, this doesn't appear to be the best example of it because it's sort of weak, but I'll try setting up a basic example of this for you so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so I gave the spotlight a cyan color, and I made the attenuation one-tenth of the strength. I also increased the range to 30. But the really interesting thing I did is I set the spotlight's position to the camera's position, and the spotlight's direction to the camera's forward direction. So essentially it's like the camera's shining this almost flashlight out of the front of it, illuminating the area in front of it. It's kind of interesting. But before I show you that, there's a subtle bug I need to address. In Spotlight, you want to make sure you set the direction to the normalized version, because in our shader, we're using the direction as a normalized vector to calculate cosine. If, we, if our direction isn't normalized, that's going to cause problems. So make sure to do that both here and in set direction. Same thing for directional light. Make sure it's directional.normalized, and you set it to a normalized direction. Other than that, let's see the code. So, when I run, you see, it got a, it's got like a flashlight. It, the attenuation, granted, is a little strong, so it sort of fades off kind of quick, but you get the idea. You could probably play around with the attenuation a little bit more to get a better s flashlight effect, but yeah, you get the idea. It's sort of a flashlight effect using our spotlight. So, with that, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I hope you'll join me next time for what's quite possibly going to be the final video in the lighting segment, and therefore the final video before we start working on the Wolfenstein 3D clone. So, yeah, hope you're excited for that, and thank you, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.